I'm Alison and I'm a microbiologist at Marine Scotland Science and today we're just going to show you a few of the things that I do day to day in the lab to identify bacteria. The reason we identify them is to try and see if they might be responsible for disease in fish. And when I get my samples in, they've been growing on agar plates for a couple of days. They've been taken out in the field by our inspectors. And when I start to look at them, they look kind of like this. But you can see that, that's various colors and sizes of bacterial colonies in dots. And we have to pick out which ones we think are significant and purify them so that we can carry on and do our tests. So the first thing that we always do with our samples and the colonies that we're interested in is make sure that they're pure and we only are working on one bacteria at a time. So to do that, we have to make a culture which is only one colony. So I will pick one colony from that population and streak it out onto a new plate where it can grow. We take a very small amount on a sterile loop and spread it on the agar plate. Then turning the plate and the loop, work our way around, almost diluting the culture until we'll have a good pattern of growth that, that we can see thoroughly. That will be incubated for 24 to 48 hours usually, sometimes even up to six weeks for some of our bacteria to grow. But once it has grown, we should have a pure culture. All the colonies look the same, like that. And then we can continue our work on those. We examine them phenotypically in the way that they look, describing them, their color, shape, and size, and biochemically in the way that they will metabolize different, um, different substances that we provide in the media. Some of our tests work very, very quickly and we get an immediate result. And I'm going to show you a couple of those just now. They're based on enzymes. The first one that I have here is an oxidase test, showing that the bacteria have oxidase enzyme. The substance I've poured on is colourless, but if the bacteria contains the enzyme, it will break off part of the molecule and produce a colour. So I take some of my bacteria from the agar plate and then I'm just rubbing it onto the paper which is soaked in my in my substrate. Hopefully you can see there very very quickly there's a purple colour there which indicates that that's a positive oxidase result. That allows me to separate the bacteria out into different categories. Another very rapid test that we check is a catalyst test. Again, this is an enzyme. And if my bacteria contains the enzyme, it'll break down the hydrogen peroxide that I have on the slide to produce oxygen bubbles. So again, I take some of my culture, mix it with the hydrogen peroxide, and hopefully we'll be able to show you some bubbles being produced as the oxygen's released from the hydrogen peroxide. So you can see the bubbles appearing in the liquid underneath the loop where I've added the bacterial culture. It's not very dramatic, but we can see that oxygen's being broken down out of the hydrogen peroxide. So the last couple of tests that we like to do as a front line for our identification are to put a little bit of my bacteria under the microscope and have a look at it directly and also to stain its cell wall to see what properties the cell wall has and have a proper look at the structure of each individual cell. We do this just by making a small suspension of the bacteria in uh, saline which is a salt solution which is designed to make sure that the cell stays in optimum condition. It doesn't collapse or expand because of the amount of the water present. So I take another small amount of my individual colony, mix it into a drop of saline, 
the stained one will be allowed to dry and then stained with four different chemicals. The motility one that we look at straight away and we'll add in some pictures and videos so that you can see what they look like down the microscope. So just a little bit of my colony mixed into my liquid and spread on the slide so that I can have a proper look when it's under the microscope. This is the gram stain where we get to see the structure of the bacteria, its proper shape and uh, this tells us a little bit about the cell wall. These are gram negative bacteria, each one is rod shaped. You can see them spaced quite randomly out and each one is relatively regular with this rod shape all stacked together. The next slide that I move across to is a gram positive and the shape is what we call cocci. So they are much smaller circles and these ones are arranged in pairs. It's not always absolutely obvious but you can see in some of them that there's a, there's a little dip in the middle or for example down here you can see it's actually two individual cells but they stay joined and that's their arrangement is in, in they stay in pairs. This is the motility, where you can see the bacteria, each individually, swimming around. We use flagella to move, and uh, as you can see, they can really swim quite quickly. Some don't swim at all, some, some swim straight, some swim in little circles, but you can see that these are definitely motile bacteria. A lot of the traditional bacteriology methods rely on biochemistry to show which enzymes and which characteristics the bacteria have and those are the things that are used to identify which bacteria is present in the fish. The tests that you can see all use colour changes to show which enzymes have been used by the bacteria and particularly this strip here has many multiple tests in it and it relates to a database and using all the positives and negatives across the whole strip, we can get a rough idea of what this bacteria might be. 